Of course, we continue to see the fallout. We heard from Qantas just yesterday, the extension of those capacity cuts, the grounding of airlines and cutting essentially, you know, every part of uh, their route availability globally, right, given that this has now also become a US and European problem, not just within Asia. For Cathay Pacific, though, I mean, this airline has just been so hard hit because even before this, we had uh, the impact of, of the ongoing government protests in Hong Kong. Yeah, so it's a really a double whammy for Cathay Pacific. Um, they were really struggling the second half of last year after completing a, a successful uh, transformation uh, and, the, and, and a return to profitability. Uh, they had a great uh, first half last year, and then all of a sudden, with the protest, the second half um, was really dismal. Uh, and we're going to see the results for that second half come out later today. And of course, since the second half of last year, the outlook has gotten even worse because of the coronavirus issue. And, and it's, it's just gone from bad to worse for Cathay Pacific. And uh, they're in a very challenging position. Their capacity is down 75 percent. 120 aircraft, or equivalent of 120 aircraft, are grounded. Um, and uh, and it's it's going to be pretty bad uh, for for most of this year probably, and it, it will take a while for for the for for Hong Kong market and the global market to recover. And Cathay Pacific, at the center of this issue with um, with the protests and uh, cl so close to mainland China, the epicenter of of this coronavirus issue, um, they're very uh, exposed and uh, insignificantly impacted. Um, Brendan, even as we speak, we're just getting this breaking line from the South China Morning Post saying that Cathay Pacific is seeking a replacement for its long-standing financial chief, so it's, uh, Chief Financial Officer Martin Murray, uh, considering external candidates for that role, and they've already started the headhunt search, according to people familiar. And the final choice could mark the first time that a CFO has been installed from outside the airline or from within Swire, right? Is this the right way to go for Cathay as it looks to kind of revitalise its image, its business? Do they need to be looking for fresh blood outside of Swire and outside of Cathay itself? Uh, I mean, it, it certainly doesn't hurt. Uh, but Swire is a very deep organisation. And, and if you look at a position like the CFO, it's, um, it, it's you know, a financial position. It's not, as, it's not like an airline strategy position. So you can go really e either way without airline experience, with airline experience, in Swire, without Swire. It doesn't make too much of a difference as long as you have somebody with good uh, CFO experience. So that position's a bit different than some of the other executive positions. Of course, Cath Cathay Pacific had a lot of turnover last year already. The unfortunate situation with Rupert Hogg having to resign and, um, and then uh, John Slosar, the chairman and the former CEO, also retiring. Um, so they've had a lot of changes and, um, and uh, it's, it's not exactly the best uh, mm -hmm. you know, situation or the best timing um, for these kind of changes. But, um, it's, 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 but they are a very deep organization, Cathay Pacific and Swire, so maybe better place than a lot of other airline groups in, in, in Asia to, um, to have this kind of turnover. How would you assess Augustus Tang's performance since he took over as CEO in August? Well, it's really too early, too early to tell. And of course, um, they, they they were just kind of dealing with the the Hong Kong uh, protest situation. You know, they had reduced capacity, but pretty small amount, single digits. Um, and they and they were you know had had to change their uh, strategy to 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 in response to that, they had to rely a lot on on six freedom transit traffic because the the inbound numbers were so far down. Um, that was able to maintain uh, load factors relatively well given the situation, but yields reduced probably around by about 10 percent. We'll see the figures later on. And of course, they were loss making because of that. And, and, and nobody would have predicted this. And, um, you know, to, to, to have what he's experiencing now, um, you know, with this situation is, is tough for any new airline CEO. Plus, it came, came on the heels of the uh, protests, which, which is in the, middle of, in the middle of that period he, he was installed. So it's really early days. And uh, it's, it's such a difficult uh, situation for any airline CEO. It would probably be too, not very fair to rate his performance at this point. Mm. This as we continue to see more travel restrictions around the world. We are seeing Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison saying that Australia is extending that travel ban to all of Italy, of course. As we continue to see this short-term pressure, though, how do you assess the long-term strategy of Cathay? Because everybody knows Cathay will have a hard time in the short term. What about the long term, though, especially given the ongoing protests in Hong Kong? Yeah, I mean it's it's the same situation, and you know I was you know what I was saying several months ago is pretty much the same. The, the long-term you know uh, position and strategy is is 
is relatively strong, but that assumes that the Hong Kong market overall recovers, and that's not just about Cathay Pacific. That's every every business in Hong Kong, and and uh, and there's a hope that you know that Hong Kong will you know recover, and and now the global market will recover from coronavirus. Um, so, but assuming that happens, um, Cathay Pacific has a very strong share of the Hong Kong market. They have a very strong hub. Hong Kong is a good transit airport, one of the leading airports in, in the world for that kind of um, business. And if people are willing to go to Hong Kong again and are willing to transit in Hong Kong again, then then Cathay Pacific is well positioned. Uh, and in the, a lot of uncertainty now in the market with with Hong Kong um, uh, Airlines, mm. the, the which is the only kind of uh, com local competitor now. You know, if, what happens there? And this, this also issue has been going on for several months, and there could be a solution pretty soon. Um, it, Hong Kong Airlines has been a very weak competitor, um, but you know, so that's benefited Cathay to some extent. But there's a lot of uncertainty of what's going to happen there in the future. Um, you know, are they are they going to be purchased by another airline? Um, are, are, are they going to go out entirely? And a lot of you know, depending on what happens there, can it impact obviously Cathay's long-term uh, position uh, and and outlook. Uh, but really, it, it boils down to whether Hong Kong recovers overall. If Hong Kong doesn't recover, uh, which hopefully that's, that's not a scenario we're looking at, but if that happens, then everybody is really going to be impacted in, in, in Hong well, Kong, not just Cathay Pacific. When it comes to the virus outbreak itself, how has Cathay reacted? How fast, how quickly, as compared to other airlines, Asian airlines, and also airlines from other regions? I think their, their reaction has been very fast and, and it, proactive, and I would I'd actually applaud Cathay Pacific and also Qantas for really being, uh, really reacting fast in terms of Asia Pacific Airlines. Um, so, I mean, obviously Cathay was more impacted um, because, you know, the doorstep to mainland China, and that, that's where we saw the first impact from this, from this coronavirus issue. Uh, but they were very fast at reducing capacity and, and um, a voluntary leave, implementing voluntary leave schemes for staff, closing lounges, cutting costs. Um, uh, while other airline groups um, in Asia have been very slow to do that, um, Qantas yesterday uh, extended their cut to 23 percent, uh, and also um, also extended their cut to September, which is which is actually a good move because it gives some consistency to to those people who are traveling. Um, some of the issues right now are that a lot of airlines have been ad hoc canceling, and they they you know they 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 keep on changing every week, and they. And they, you know, it's not like a consistent flight that's being canceled, but you know, a couple of days here or there, and it's it's very hard to plan anything. And, and most of the cancellations are right now only through May. Um, Qantas has gone through mm. and done that through September. Of course, it can change; they can increase, they can decrease, um, but it's consistent. Yeah. And um, and they were and they were them faster at reacting. Um, you also look at airline groups like Lufthansa, um, even the U.S. carriers, some of the other European carriers. They much faster once the virus spread to Europe and North America at at responding in terms of a significant capacity cut and a consistent kind of r response in terms of the amount Brendan. of capacity taken out of the market, while some of the airlines here have been very slow and ad hoc.